know. So the first company that that called me, I had an interview with them, and everybody from all over Western Canada came on interview. From the gym, it was very hot and everything, and I was like, wow. And we had the interview, and I didn't hear from them again. So I sent them a mail. I did follow up. I I remember Rukaya saying something that um, they like uh, people that I interview you, the company. They like you to send a mail after to say, oh, thank you, blah 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 blah. So I, I did that. I didn't hear from them. No response. <laughs> so I was like, ah, what's this? I, I I thought I put in my best and everything was okay and I was expecting them to call me, but I didn't hear from them. So I just told myself, you know what? This other company. After. I, after somebody helped me with my CV, repackage my CV, I said, let me just send it to this other company. So I sent it to the other company, and the other company called me. They, they, they sent me a mail. The president so sent me a mail immediately. And when I have been able to talk, that I uh, like your CV. So I said, oh, okay, I'm getting audience here. I told him, you now sent it to an HR consultant who packaged the whole interview and everything, and I went there, and, and I got the job. And the, this other company, the second company, pays me almost one and a half times what this first company was going to pay me. So I, 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 when I heard Biodon talk about rejection, right, I just I, I, I can relate to what he's saying, being that you can be rejected somewhere. It doesn't mean you are not good. It could mean you are too good for them. That first company, in the interview, they asked me a question. The question they asked me was, what if there are customers, clients coming? It's not a bank, it's, a, it's an organization, they into logistics and supply management and so on. What if an, um, a customer comes in and starts making trouble because he hasn't received this check, he hasn't received payment? In my mind, as a banker from where I'm coming from, I'm like, anybody that can't pay his dues as I went due, really has a problem. Do I really want to work in this organization? But because I was like, well, I'm really looking for a job. I gave an answer. I, I, there was a question mark that came up in my mind. That, Am I in the right place then? I mean, that's what I asked myself in my mind. But I gave my best in there. I said, oh, this is what I'll do. I'll defend the company and so on and so forth. You know? But this second company, they were small. They paid their dues as I went due. They don't owe unnecessarily. They are well organized and the salary is more, you know. So if you are rejected somewhere, don't be don't be discouraged. Honestly, I tell you that place is not meant for you. I'm telling you, where it's meant, just keep on going. You will find where where you should be and you'll be happy there. And I'm happy in this place. Yeah, they are not big, but they are very they know what they are doing. Hello. Yes, we hear you. Okay, they know what they are doing, you know, and the fact that I'm there makes me happy. And I, I just, I, I keep thanking God because I mean, God is sovereign. I keep thanking Him that, thank God, that first company did not call me because if they had called me with the kind of mindset I had, I would have gone to that first one and I wouldn't have bothered even trying the second one. I wouldn't bother sending my CV a second time there. You know, so the discouragement comes. Discouragement comes sometimes because, yeah, number one, maybe we didn't package ourselves well. Like I didn't package myself well the first time, you know, for this with my CV. With the discouragement, I was able to repackage my CV and I sent it out again. You know, and then thank God that I wasn't called and that discouragement came. I was really discouraged, and that discouragement came because with the way I repackaged my CV, I was able to get this uh, the audience from this other company. The company that I thought was not, I mean, I didn't, the way they were even located, I didn't even understand why they were there, you know. And being there, I've seen that, wow, things are not really the way we think they are sometimes. I was thinking of, I stay in um, Winkler. I was thinking of relocating to Winnipeg to look for a job because of the mindset, okay, Winkler, not much is there. I, when I got to this place, I found out that, um, some people actually work, live, work there and live in Winnipeg. The place is not 
in Winkler. It's about 30 minutes away from Winkler, right? The location, the town is about 30 minutes away from Winkler. But the town is one hour away from Winnipeg. And people come from Winnipeg to work there. So I was like, wow, I'm not bad of and 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 it's a good story. So I just want to share this story and encourage whoever needs it that don't give up. Don't be discouraged, you know. Stick this is a good forum. I mean the the, the truth is being told here and I, I pray that prosperity comes on everybody here. Thank you very much. And that story. Good. I have two points about your story. I really love it. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, Bernard. Uh, one of the things when you talk about God, um, for those of you who believe in God or is somewhere bigger than us as human beings, uh, you can think about that whenever you're down. Because if you think back in your life of situations that were challenging, somehow you got an idea or a, situation, a new situation occurred that help you move forward. So you're not in a totally different situation right now, it's just a new challenge, and that bigger force than us might help you if you're open. If you don't just close your mind and go into the depression. So that could be one thing to hold on when you are uh, down. Another thing that you can do when you get a rejection is uh, Instead of thinking, oh, I'm not good, no one will hire me, whatever, whatever you go in what, which direction you think, uh, stop and start remembering that interview, for example, and think about what worked well, what didn't work well, what we can do differently next time. Because you can use this job interview as a stepping stone to build better job interviewing skills to do better next time when you approach a company, when you go to a job interview. If you don't get results about the resume, you send it out and you don't get the job interviews, stop from time to time and th think about, is it going well? Is it not? Is it something that I can do differently? Uh, can I use another strategy? Can I combine strategies? So there, are, there is always something that you can do. And when you have this mindset that there is always something that you can do, you will take maybe baby steps, but you will progress and you will go wherever you want. Done. Okay, thank you, Gabriela. And uh, thanks, uh, Bernard. Uh, that's a very interesting story, you know. And I um, really, really like um, how you encourage uh, others. And, you know, it's interesting um uh, that the story um uh, i think uh are you are you indicated to come up so i think of uh okay yeah so the one thing i wanted to point out here is this and it this is what i have learned um uh generally in life that um uh it's also part of the hero's journey when you really think about it there are times that I've gone through very, very, you know, hopeful things in life. And I will tell you just in line with what Gabriela said earlier about mindset. And it kind of, you know, it's kind of my philosophy in life right now. And if you guys have noticed the way I'm very, very open to sharing with people, actually, uh, it's also in line with that philosophy that you are going through these challenges not because of you you are going through these challenges because you will come out of it that's the mindset we're talking about it and not only that you would now share your experience with others who are currently going through it that is actually the philosophy for our network if you have been long in our network we are here in this network because we have gone through some things that are very very unique to foreign trained professionals in canada and we went through it when we came out of it just like you will do even if it doesn't look so right now and you will come back into our network and then share what you did differently just the same way that bernard has shared with us and actually in a nutshell that is the complete in the, the the remaining part of the hero's journey uh, Gabriela said earlier that uh, you would have to die, and when when I say die physically, 
<laughs> we're saying there is something that is holding you back and you have to die from that something. Bernard said something there when he had to reach out. The one that I can point to you that Bernard died of is the ego, the ego of fear of rejection that he had to die from in order for him to reach out back to those people. If he hadn't let go, so another word for die is let go. If you do not let go, not letting go will actually hold you down and you won't be able to make any progress. And that's what a lot of us are really going through. And this is why I want to point you guys out to the Heroes Journeys model to have a look at it. Essentially, we are going through this journey in life in itself, not even job search right now, because we want to learn something that we will now share with others who are just starting out that journey. And that's actually my uh, philosophy when it comes to um, into the, my purpose here. You know, generally speaking about life now, right now, it's my purpose here. And this is why you see me uh, coming, showing up every time to make sure that I tell you guys about what I experienced and what you can do differently, what I did differently. And that's really has been my passion because of this understanding of the fundamental process of life, the evolution that we're all going through in life is just so that we can come out of this and then share that experience with those who are just starting that journey. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Uh, I think Ayo joined us. Um, Gabriela, do you want to uh, share? I think you had your mic on there. Um, okay, Amute, are you ready yet? Uh, Rukayat, Isimeme. Uh, Ayo. I can't uh, summarize what you're saying with uh, that uh, thought that came to mind. What doesn't kill you make make you stronger. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of the base of what you're saying. Uh, we go through these challenges because we have to grow to become stronger. So no matter where you are, no matter what challenges you face right now or your face they are helping you to become stronger awesome no other one subject has been more anal hi everyone hi i i must say that it's it's been a packed session uh, i've enjoyed gabriella uh, gloria and abby's uh, contributions today i've learned a lot today Thank you, everyone that's contributed. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thing. I had an encounter a while back, and it left me with an experience that helps me today. I was um, at that point where I was frustrated, and I was just ranting off to a senior, um, well, like a mentor, who had been in the country for longer and had found his footing. And I was just going on and on about how I wasn't given a chance to um lend my expertise to whatever i was doing and he at the point he asked me a couple of questions that looked like it was totally unrelated to what we were talking about he asked me if i knew who the prime minister of latvia was he asked me the currency in papua new guinea he asked me if i knew the name of um, the apex banking institution in those countries and um I didn't know any of those answers. So he said to me that it's a lot of the time people are uncomfortable with what they don't know. And you can't blame people for being uncomfortable with what they don't know. Um, so if, if you're not from my country and my background is from a banking institution that you've never heard of, um, then I, I shouldn't blame the recruiter that doesn't too comfortable giving me an opportunity right off the bat. I mean, this person doesn't know you, this person doesn't know the work culture in your country, doesn't know what the work ethics are, doesn't know what you stand for, if you're going to be a good team fit, if you're going to um, upset the team dynamics, you know. So it, it, the, the challenge we should take uh, as immigrants, um, according to this person I was speaking with, and I kind of agree with him, is to come to that point of being relatable, we have to come to that point where we, we, we're able to project our humanity and our professionalism 
and those will be the common denominators that cuts across the cultures, the countries, the the every other thing. Because if you're if you're able to come across as being as as, as uh, if you're relatable and you're able to come across as being a professional, being a human being, there are, there are things that are universal, right? Um, working hard is a universal principle. It doesn't change from it, working hard isn't four hours in one country and uh, working smart in another country, right? Humor is relatable. It's it's I mean so the challenge then is how do I project myself? with those denominators as um, as the basis for being relatable and, and, and it's helped me a lot i i try now to look at things through those lenses because in a sense it's also a little bit arrogant for us to assume that um oh because i've got this this length of experience or this 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 array of experience from this country then it should also automatically translate into the kind of role that i want um, without even trying to understand the culture of where we are, the kind of people they are, what they want from us. And so that, that really has helped me. I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. I, thanks so much. I really I... love what you're saying about uh, the, other, uh, the other's perspective, the employer's, the recruiter perspective on our, on our background. And what I found is that um, we need patience. We come usually from other countries with a lot of experience and we think, oh, I need a job and I need to, to put food on the table, that I need to accept my experience. And we're so in a rush that we don't realize that this takes time. What you said is very true. We need to help them understand our, ourselves. We need to help them understand how our experience and the skills help them. We need to help them understand who we are as people. And that's why we keep talking about reaching out to people because at least that it's very easy because we're all humans and we can connect at the human level. So we keep talking about networking. I personally don't like the, talk, the word networking. To me, it's kind of meaningless. I like to say either strategic networking or just be assertive. Set your goal and go find ways to achieve it. And in the process, you will meet people. You will talk to people. You will project a your brand, who you are, they will see your personality, they will want to help you. So it's a process, and that process take, takes time. I'm done. Yeah, I like that perspective, that it's a process. And you know, this is one thing that, um, so what I just, what I just giving you out there, the um, Euro's journey model is that process we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> it's that process, the process, that you have to go through. Even people who have accomplished a lot in life still have to go through that process. So the moment you realize there is this process that needs to, you need to go through, the earlier then you start with that process, the closer you get to your desired uh, goal. So, and uh, the other thing I would like to add to that is when um, Ayo mentioned about perspective, and I think uh, Gabriela spoke to the perspectives um, of uh, having the other person's perspectives. Um, because we, are, we, we have a lot of supply chain people here, and you know, um, this topic is actually about negotiating the social cultural barriers in Canada. When we talk about negotiation, that is one fundamental skill set of people who are in uh, supply management. And if you really want to negotiate better uh, in supply management as a procurement or any other role that you are playing in supply management, you actually have to understand the other person's perspective. It's the foundation of negotiation preparation. The fact that you need not only to understand their their position, the position here in terms of the job search is that they want people who have Canadian experience, as a lot of people would like to put it out there. You know, it's Canadian experience and all. That is the position. But what is the underlying interest of that position? And that's what Gabriela has spoken to a lot today. What is the underlying interest why they have that position the fact that 
It is a risky business. Recruitment is a risky business. You, no companies want to engage an employee only for, for them to be thinking of hiring another person. It's an expensive project to hire an employee and no company wants to engage in this competitive, this bureaucratic process only to wind up with somebody who is not qualified. So having that understanding will lead you to several things in terms of how you then negotiate yourself to the job that you desired. And I think Gabriela mentioned one very good example there, uh, which I think uh, Bernard also spoke to that. The fact that you know that a lot of organizations actually are not posting these jobs because they know it's a bureaucratic process that might not even lead them to what they want. You can actually approach these companies when they do not have a job posted at all. And I, I, I tell a lot of folks, especially those who I train uh, that I mentor to actually identify some specific companies of interest uh, they, they may be small companies. It's about negotiation at the end of the day. There is a negotiation that is ongoing. And if you are not aware of this, there is a tendency that you'll be approaching things differently and you'll be hitting your head against the wall and being frustrated in the process because you are not negotiating these things effectively. Example there of approaching people who are already working in this company. That's how you actually get to know the culture of these organizations. That is it even worth it to work in these companies to start? Well, you can only learn that from the experience of those who are already working in the organization. That's that's understanding the perspectives of that organization from somebody, your colleague who is already working in there. And then they, they can even give you some insight that you never, never even a thought of that will empower you let's say maybe in future there's an opportunity in that organization for that person could actually give you a referral if you were able to build trust and rapport like gloria had emphasized before she left you know like building rapport adding value to these people and the moment they are able to build rapport with you like they will be the one even asking you for your resume i've seen it happen with people that I work with when they're able to actually do this job. So this process needs to happen. If this process is not happening and you're only going through, you just focus on the interests of the employee, I mean, the position of the employer of, oh, we need Canadian work experience because you are not negotiating it properly. Uh, you're not really working the process. Working the process is what really actually leave the quality result quality output i'm using these languages because most of you guys are in the industry you're industry professionals and this is really what we do even in the industry so we need to use that understanding those perspectives to negotiate the job search better than we do currently if we are not getting results apparently we're seeing the metrics and it's telling us something is not working then you have to see how to negotiate it differently so that you can get your desired result. So I'm just gonna leave it uh, there for now. Um, we would be looking forward to others' uh, perspectives uh, about this. Um, if you'd like to share, please, uh, you can take the mic. I have another example if you want. Uh, to one point I went hiking and someone approached me. I was with a group of people. I didn't know those people. And someone approached me and uh, I realized that she's a newcomer and she told me she's looking for a job for six months already and she was really frustrated, uh, didn't know what to do. And uh, I gave her a few of the strategies that I uh, talked about today. And one of the strategy was uh, look for companies that are not far from you. It's that's what we, before the pandemic, but even now it's working. Start with a list of companies, small companies, and approach them directly. And that's what she did. And later on, uh, uh, a few months after she contacted me again, she said she approached uh, several companies. One of them uh, suggested, uh, offered her a contract, part-time contract. And at the beginning, she didn't want to accept that. So you have to be aware that of the different type of contracts in Canada. It could be part-time contract, it could be full-time contract, it could be part-time uh, permanent positions, so all these type of uh, positions. So she was looking, she had a lot of good experience, she was looking for a full-time permanent position. 
and she was almost ready to not accept that first contract. But she accepted because she was a little bit desperate. Then after she got that six months contract, the company liked how she uh, worked and offered her a full-time contract. Then she went into a full-time permanent contract with another company. So the idea is you can build the path that you want by going from one type of contract to another, from one company to another. So it doesn't have to be the first job that you have. It's the the ideal uh, job that can take you into re retirement and nothing else happen. So it could be a step-by-step -step process. Uh, thank you, Gabriella.